It's like a bad dream because I think we had all feared that something like this might happen. I think it's important that people understand that he's a journalist and not a spy. It's important that they understand who Evan is. Breaking news overnight, an American reporter for the Wall Street Journal has been arrested in Russia. He's now facing 20 years in prison. Evan Gershkovich was arrested by Russia's domestic intelligence service, the FSB, in the city of Yekaterinburg, which is about 800 miles east of Moscow. The FSB, as far as we know, grabbed Evan when he was in a cafe. He was taken from Yekaterinburg to Moscow, where he was brought before a court in Moscow to a closed hearing. And the only thing we were able to see, we saw a glimpse of Evan being brought out by officers with a hood pulled up over his head and with a hand on the back of his neck. Evan right now is being held in the Lofortova prison in Moscow. It's known as one of the most isolating prisons in Russia, and it's designed deliberately to keep people incommunicado. This espionage charges are ridiculous. We're making it real clear that it's being totally illegal what's happening. You know, I would say he's my closest friend. Uh, we talk every day. I talked to him two hours before his arrest. Uh, we were just you know, texting about football. So yeah, obviously this is a huge shock to me, to the whole journalistic community. Everyone knew him, everyone loved him. Um, everyone knows these charges are bogus. Um, Evan was not a spy, Evan is a journalist. When Russia invaded Ukraine, most Western reporters left Russia almost immediately. And that was because Russia introduced these very draconian laws that basically criminalized reporting accurately on the war in Ukraine. And there was no longer any certainty that Western reporters would be safe in Russia. To get a better sense of how the country is responding, I called my colleague Evan Gershkovich, who's been reporting from the region. They are worried, uh, extremely worried, about uh, what I think everybody has seen as an increasingly erratic government in Moscow. Evan did stand out for making the decision to keep going back into Russia and to keep reporting. Did you ever talk to him about what could happen uh, as a journalist in Russia? Uh, no, uh, but I trusted him. I trusted his judgment. Of course, it makes things more difficult for me now because I, I feel, feel that I've failed in some way as a father. What has been amazing is that very quickly we saw that Evan's friends have begun this remarkable campaign to try and free him. At the moment, we're really trying to tell Evan's story to make sure that people know who he was, about his humor and his character and his devotion to journalism. You know, he wanted to be a journalist more than anything in the world. His parents are Soviet emigres who came over here in the like late 70s or early 80s. And so he obviously has family personal ties to Russia and grew up knowing the language. He was really passionate about um, showing other sides to Russia, the nuance and, and, the, and the beauty of it. Medical condition that prohibits this. In the last few years, Russia has taken several Americans hostage, essentially, to try and use them as bargaining chips. And we saw with Brittany Griner that she was freed in a prisoner exchange for Victor Boot, the notorious arms dealer. And we saw that Trevor Reed was released for a pilot called Konstantin Yeroshenko. So now it's almost certain that the only way that Evan can be freed is through some kind of negotiation. The problem is that, as we've seen with Paul Whelan, it can be very difficult for the United States government to find a Russian that they are willing to trade. We've begun in earnest to start sketching out what a negotiation might look like, but we have a, we're, we've yet to uh, get together with them to discuss how we're going to make this happen and get it done. Evan's arrest is a major moment. It's really the Kremlin crossing a line that it hasn't done before. The last time an American reporter was arrested in Russia on espionage charges was back at the end of the Cold War. But for a very long time, foreign reporters generally felt that they were able to operate in Russia and that they had a different level of protection compared to local Russian reporters who already faced very severe pressure, often violence, harassment. It's what's one of the American qualities that we absorbed. Be optimistic, believe in happy, happy ending. That's uh, where we stand right now. But I am not stupid. I understand what's involved, but that's what I choose to believe. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.